Hello traders, today I spent the day preparing a video for yield farming and for DeFi passive income. But as I was doing that, I started to notice the same pattern over and over and over again with uh, DeFi coins. And it's a little something that I do want to share with you guys. I've talked about the relationship between liquidity, meaning how many people are staking or pooling a certain token and the price of that token. But today I want to just reveal a little bit more in that uh, concept. A lot of beginning traders are going to be attracted to passive income. They're going to see things like this. Uh, here, let me see where it is. Perfect. They're going to see things like this that say like, hey, you know, 700% APR, uh, you know, stuff like that, where if you type this in, if I put $1,000, I make, you know, $18 a day, which is amazing. They look at things like that, but they don't really understand that a lot of other beginning traders are just likely going to be buying the top in order to pull these tokens. So here's a little pattern that I've noticed that I want to share with you guys. So what you're looking at right here is one of the popular tokens on uh, PancakeSwap for yield farming. So S fund is right down here to be pulled with BNB. And if you look here at liquidity, meaning how many people are staking, pulling these tokens to earn passive income, it's really taken off in the past few days. It's gone from, you know, in the past week, I think it's grown by a staggering $10 million. So now another $10 million are staking this coin. And I've noticed a near perfect relationship between the price of the token and how many people are staking it. The reason this happens is here's the kind of uh, rundown for how you can take advantage of DeFi. Step one, you see a massive APR. So you see, let's say a new pool get listed on PancakeSwap that promises 10% a day, like I don't know, 3,600% APR, something crazy. A bunch of traders are gonna probably begin to buy that token, uh, to buy both of those tokens. And as they begin to buy that token, that's gonna increase the liquidity because they're, um, they're pulling it, you know, increase in liquidity, and that's going to drive the price up naturally. But then what ends up happening is you get to a saturation point where the APR, meaning the payout per, per year, uh, gets lower, which means that people aren't as interested in staking, which means that they might begin to remove their staking from a certain liquidity pool. And when people remove their stake from a liquidity pool, uh, it's pretty fair to uh, bet that they might be selling that token. They might be unpooling it and then selling those tokens, which would drive the price lower. So typically, just think about it this way. A lot of people um, who are staking, 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 and the price is very likely going to rise for that token. But when people start to see a lower APR and begin to unstake, be worried because that's where massive price decreases tend to happen. So just to show you kind of what this looks like, I mean, you can see it, it's just, an, again, a near like one-to-one -one relationship with it. If I go back to the monthly, and we look at what happened, you know, uh, right where it began to kind of take off a little bit slowly. I, oops, sorry. Go to monthly. You can see it's just been pretty good growth. And that's because the liquidity has pretty much grown. And even as the liquidity fell a little bit here, that coincided with this. And you might say, well, if it's such a good uh, relationship, is wouldn't it just mean that it's already, it's already kind of baked into price? Meaning that, you know, if liquidity increases by a million dollars, then price has already increased efficiency. Not exactly for a few reasons. Uh, one thing I've noticed is that these trends tend to not uh, end. They, they, they tend to trend. I mean, I, I know that was not a good English sentence, but basically when people see a high APR, people continue to pile in. Basically what ends up happening is, you know, if it goes from liquidity of 100K to 200K, 200K to 400K, it's reasonable to assume that if that APR is still high, traders will still probably continue to buy that coin. And you can kind of see this evidenced in um, the liquidity here, how liquidity just continued to rise. So we, we can't always predict when people are going to, you know, begin removing liquidity, but I can tell you that it has been pretty consistent for when liquidity is rising, typically buying is a little bit better, and then you just you know wait for a bit, and then you can sell, and typically it, it leads to a pretty good payout. So here's another example with Shisha, which is uh, another coin that is on the yield farming list over here. Now if we look here, I know that doesn't look too pretty, but if we look here at the uh, relationship, you can see in the past few days from like November 23rd to 25th, 24 to 25, really a lot of people started staking. And November 23rd to 25th was this. So you can see if you began to purchase this coin, 
you know, maybe on the 23rd or the 24th, that would have a good short-term payout. And again, a lot of this kind of strategy is taking advantage of noob retail traders, buying during the gold mine, buying during the gold rush, and then selling them the shovels at the top, if that analogy makes sense. Basically, instead of staking, holding the coin and then waiting for liquidity to falter. And then once liquidity falters, maybe a little bit, then um, dumping the coin. This kind of strategy has a pretty good risk reward that I've found, especially when there's a high APR, when there's a high payout um, for the token's liquidity. So that's another one. And, and you just basically see the exact same pattern, like time and time again, bomber coin, I don't even know what that is, Bitcoin. Uh, this one I think was pretty good too. So if I look at bomb crypto and we go to the overview in the seven day, yeah, let's see what this is. So liquidity really has, uh, what, doubled or really taken off? Yeah, just about doubled, especially starting November 21st. You know, ever since November 21st, no, ever since November 20th, 21st, it really just did well. And you can see that this one didn't fully follow the trend, but it is up, you know, as we would typically expect um, here, even though it did dip a little bit on the 21st. So actually that would have been a good buying opportunity. If you're seeing liquidity rise and you see the price fall a little bit, you know, buying at five, $6 would have been good because it's now obviously a lot higher. And then for the main example of today that I was actually going to base everything on, uh, Zoo. This one's really interesting because when you see liquidity jump like this, you know price is going to get a little uh, crazy. So I'm going to show you guys exactly what that is and then we're going to talk about strategies going forward. Um, so if I look at the seven day and we go to Zoo, this happened November 20th, 19. It doubled in one day, uh, probably because the liquidity pool got listed so people were able to stake their LPs. But you can see this is insane. Doubling in one day with $7 million, I mean, yeah, November 20th was, wow, it just skyrocketed. And if we look at Zoo on November 20th, look at that. There was a period in time where you definitely could have taken advantage of this. Uh, and as liquidity doubled, you know, price doubled as well. You can see price went from about like 0 0.6, 0 0.7 at about uh, midday to up to here. It just doubled like that. And what would have happened is what I would have seen is on pinky swap, you, you'd see the APR slowly dwindle and you'd see people just rushing up liquidity of Zoo, crypto world. And what I would have done is once you see that trend begin to take off in the short term, you know, liquidity being added, that's probably when uh, it's a good time to buy the token and then kind of begin to think about when to exit, maybe November 21st, where actually liquidity fell a little bit November 21st. That is a sell signal. And November 21st would have been a great time to sell, as you can see here. So I've actually found that doing this, weirdly enough, is actually a way that does better than passive income DeFi. Because there's there's really the, the main camp of DeFi is, hey, let's just do what everyone tells me to do, which is I'm going to buy these two tokens, I'm going to pull them together, I'm going to stake them on uh, PancakeSwap right here. You know, I want to get that APR, and then you just walk away. That's really dangerous and easily taking advantage of. Um, and that's why guys like me and other viewers like you, if you're able to watch out for this, to, to really be able to say, huh, okay, so if liquidity is quickly increasing for this token, then perhaps the price will likely follow. Because I kid you not, um, about two, three hours ago, liquidity for that top pool of Zoo BNB was at about $50,000. It's now 10 times higher. So I was beginning to think about buying Zoo when liquidity was like at 100K or 200K. And if, you, if we look at the price of Zoo right now, uh, it has increased obviously uh, today, you know. Because when I was talking about a few hours ago, I mean like around here, it was about 0.9 and it's already like 0 0.98, 0 0.97. Um, as you can see in the past few hours, it's gone up a little bit, now to 0.98. And that will likely just continue to rise until liquidity begins to falter until people stop adding liquidity. And if you ever want a live look at liquidity, you can go to, of course, these pages as well, and you can look at the liquidity um, over time to see, you know, is it uh, increasing or decreasing. But yeah, to, to basically sum up this point, tracking liquidity pools, tracking high APRs, and instead of just like trying to get that high APR, trying to think about timing the market, 
where you purchase a token that's having increasing liquidity with good risk reward, and then thinking about selling that token when liquidity begins to either flatline, meaning not many people are adding to pools, or begins to falter, meaning people are withdrawing from pools and likely selling the native token, selling the token and the native token. So this is a strategy that I've kind of concocted and it's definitely something before you just dive in doing stuff like this, definitely do your research on uh, pancakeswap.finance slash info slash token. Go look at the relationship between liquidity added, new pools being listed, and then, I mean, who knows? There are plenty of doubling and tripling opportunities within a day that happen just because a bunch of people just rush in to buy something that has a high APR. And what you can do is buy during or buy before and sell them the shovel at the top, you know, for the last people who are adding to the liquidity pool. Machiavellian, but profitable. All right, with that, guys, I, I think that this has been definitely a strategy worth pursuing. If you guys think so, whatever, uh, you know, go check it out. If not, then whatever. But with that, uh, happy trading, and I hope to talk to you guys soon. See ya.